You can go to Snowflake's website and read all about the many reasons you should use their cloud database. From low maintenance and administration, to elastic scalability, secure sharing of governed data, data apps that run across multiple clouds, and a growing platform of useful services. But I don't work for Snowflake, so I'm going to talk about the one benefit that I believe is their biggest game changer. You've heard of the separation of church and state from the U.S. Bill of Rights. Well, Snowflake believes in the separation of compute and storage. Let me explain first with a couple of charts. This illustrates the busiest point during each of the first five days of a month, the time when the most ad hoc SQL queries were running in parallel against an on-prem database. Users from three different teams were all submitting queries. Team 2 consistently ran the most queries, followed by Team 3 and then Team 1. The maximum combined number of queries from all teams was always well within the database's ability to process the queries in parallel. In fact, based on the first five days of the month, the database was underutilized. Then BAM! Team 4 came in like a bull in a china shop, and suddenly the database was overutilized. During the second five days of the month, some queries had to wait for resources to become available before they could run because other queries were being processed. The database lacks the scalability necessary to enable all teams to share the same data simultaneously. What would be better would be if each team's queries were independent rather than cumulative among all teams. If each team could run on their own hardware instead of sharing resources with the other teams, then each team could have control over their own experience, ensuring consistent query times. Since Snowflake separates compute from storage, each team can have their own compute cluster, and they can size it for their own needs. For a team with relatively few ad hoc queries, like Team 1, they can utilize the smallest cluster, which only contains one virtual machine. And a team that submits a much greater amount of queries, like Team 4, could spin up a large cluster with 8 VMs. All teams will have access to the exact same data, which is kept in cloud object storage. But each team's dedicated and isolated compute resources will never impact any other team's query performance. When a team needs more concurrency because more of their users start submitting queries, then Snowflake can automatically scale out by adding another cluster. Additional clusters can automatically be allocated as the number of queries increase, until the team's maximum cluster limit is reached. When a team's compute resources are set up, they can choose to enable auto-scaling, and then select the minimum and maximum number of clusters that can be automatically allocated based on query demand. Another great feature is auto-suspending. For example, if everyone on Team 3 goes to lunch, their cluster will automatically stop running, so they will not be charged a usage fee while no one is using the cluster. This is a long sought after feature. Before Snowflake, the notion of transient clusters that could be spun up and down based on usage, sounded like a great idea, but it would require manual administration. Now, with Snowflake, all you need to do is turn on the Auto Suspend feature and specify the length of inactivity that will trigger the cluster to be automatically suspended, like here, where the cluster will be stopped after no one has used it for five minutes. This is so important because you are only charged 
when a cluster is running. So you want to have your clusters automatically suspended when they're not in use. Then the auto resume feature will automatically restart a cluster when a new SQL query is submitted. Before pay per use became available, it was difficult to allocate costs accurately. Many companies paid for on prem resources by assessing each project team an equal share of the overall price. But this often led to inequities, like the three teams here that paid for more than they used, and the one team that consumed the vast majority of resources and slowed down query processing for the other teams. With Snowflake, each team will pay for only what it uses, and they are guaranteed to receive all of the resources that they pay for. The billing for compute is on a per second basis, and there is a one to one relationship between the number of VMs used and the dollar amount charged. Which means if a team needs more resources during a certain time of the month, then they can allocate more to themselves and pay exactly for what they used. I've been speaking about allocating individual compute clusters to each team, but you can define team however you want. You can subset by business department or subset within a team based on the activities performed with the data they consume. When an IT team acts as a data producer, they can subset based on different methods used to ingest data into Snowflake. Or when an IT team is developing apps, they can subset based on environment. So I hope you can see now that migrating from a communal database to a set of independent Snowflake clusters is a huge advantage because it reduces resource contention.